The popular Swiss cheese plant is a jungle plant that can grow up to 60 feet with the proper support. It needs bright and direct light, should be watered moderately, and needs high humidity. This plant is a climber, so give it something to climb up or let it trail or hang. And propagation can be done from a cutting in water. Plant parent guide, how to propagate your Monstera adansonii because this thing's just dying on me. All right, what you need, scissors, alcohol pads, and propagation stations, or in use jars, mason jars that you have lying around, sanitize it, and then look for the nodes and cut just below it. So the nodes are these bumps and cut right here. Some people let it callous over, but I'm, I don't know. I'm just trying it out, okay? Fill them up, fill up those jars, and just stick it in. And I guess wait for three weeks. Follow for more. Seven weeks ago, I decided to propagate my Monstera adansonii because it was dying on me. This is what it used to look like. This is what it looks like now. I have new leaves, new roots, new growth, and more new growth. Don't forget to follow me for more plant-related videos and tips. combine two of my Swiss cheese monsteras. The vines had gotten super long so I repotted them together and then I added the vase in the center so that I could add a moss pole later to train it to climb. But they didn't have any at the store so we're gonna make one! A friend told me that the best strategy is Spanish moss or peat moss with organic twine with a base pole in the center to give you a foundation. Then we're gonna wet our moss which can make quite a disaster, so fair warning, friends. And then I just started to pull the moss kind of into like thick strands and then wrapped around the bamboo pole, which ended up being the better length for my plant. I did it in sections and then I would go back and wrap in the opposite direction with the twine. And this is what it looked like in the end. And if you'd like to see this bad boy wrapped, then come back for part two. My Swiss cheese plant is getting too tall, and I need to extend the totem. My boyfriend offered to make the pole for me. Time to keep growing. Okay, so let's hop right into it. I think that the biggest problem with this plant is that it just intimidates people, and they think that it's harder to take care of than it is. Um, I have mine right here in this window as you can see, so it's getting pretty direct light, but not entirely direct. They do like direct light, I just don't have space for it there. The big thing is well draining soil. You want to make sure that you have it in a mixture that's got like orchid bark, perlite, regular potting mix, like not anything where it's going to just set in water because you're going to get yellow leaves and you're going to get root rot. Also, every couple months I hit it with this. Um, I even did during the winter. I know some people say that you shouldn't fertilize during the winter, but this is extremely easy on the plant, unlike some other ones. I will warn you that it smells absolutely horrible though, and it looks equally bad. Also, don't be afraid of propagation. It is your friend. It's going to encourage growth on the plant and you just end up with another one. You stick it in water and in just a couple weeks you'll have roots like this. This is my Monstera Adesonia Swiss cheese plant. You'll see in a moment we got some growth coming in, baby. Grab your saucer and we're gonna fill it up with water. This is one way to control overwatering. Leave it for about 15 to 20 minutes. When you come back, you'll see some of the water is gone. Don't forget to like, baby. Monstera Adesonia plant care tips. They like bright and direct light, though they can tolerate medium to low light. They'll just grow much, much slower. They like the first 75% of their soil to be dried out before you water them again. They love to climb or vine. You'll just need to give them something to climb or plenty of space to cast feed over. They are not pet friendly, so a hanging basket can be great for them. 
They are super easy to propagate. You just need a node and a leaf. They really appreciate high humidity. Oh, and direct sun will actually scorch their leaf, so make sure it's indirect bright. This beauty is called the Monstera Addisonii, also known as the Swiss cheese plant. You'll want to put this plant near a window where it will receive bright but indirect sunlight. Trim the vines as needed if they start to look scraggly to encourage new growth. I think watering is the trickiest part in regards to caring for a Monsteras. They like consistently moist soil, but don't want it to be too soggy. I water mine usually about once a week. Hey everyone, uh, actually, hold on. Hi there. Uh, today we are dealing with my Monstera, but not this Deliciosa. Get out of the way. We're actually, move. We're actually dealing with my Monstera Adansini right here. Yeah, he's a little limp, so we gotta stake him up. I found these stackable coconut core poles on Amazon a few months ago, and they're pretty good. Um, but they are pretty easy to make, so I bought a roll of coconut core myself just to make them for future use. And this plant wire I actually found at the dollar store. It's flexible, durable, easy to use, and it doesn't harm the plants as long as you use it correctly, which means pretty much not wrapping a node too tight. And that's pretty much it. It's all staked up, which means that the leaves are actually growing bigger now. And we're done. <laughs> hey guys, today I decided to repot my Monstera Adinsoniae. Uh, it grew out of the nursery pot, the roots are everywhere, and I got some perlite, some bark, some soil, and just massaged the roots, then filled the pot, and just gave it a good wash, and put it back into space. Going to great this winter, hopefully, fingers crossed. Look at these leaves. Today, I decided to repot my Monstera adansonii, also known as a Swiss cheese plant. And I wanted to show you an example of why I almost always go full terracotta. I started seeing some spots on her leaves and it was a little concerning. And my suspicion was that it was due to overwatering. This is the pot that she was in. It is terracotta, but it's glazed over half the pot. Right before I went to pot her, I stuck my finger about an inch in the soil and it felt pretty dry. The pothos next to her is on the same watering schedule and it was very dry and I was shocked to see that the soil deeper down where the pot is glazed was soaking wet. So now I'm positive that this beautiful lady was getting overwatered. So this is a great example of why I almost always go full terracotta. Terracotta is breathable and it helps the soil dry out evenly to prevent overwatering. Thanks for watching. Follow Jungle and the Natty for more crazy plant lady stuff. What's up? Today I'm gonna to be repotting the sand and Sony. When I first planted this, it was a cutting consisting of only two leaves, and it is almost tripled in size, so chances are the roots have two. She was in this four inch pot, and I'm going to be moving her into this six inch pot. Here's my potting recipe. One part succulent mix, one part orchid mix, only half as much perlite, and I mix in a little bit of moss just to retain moisture. Chances are I could get away with taking a cutting, but I'm honestly terrified. I'm sorry, but it's absolutely bonkers to me that this was just a cutting of two leaves and I was just trying to grow out one root. Have some hope is all I'm saying. I also have this little pole from Arod Greenhouses that I'll be using. This is literally the perfect time to avoid smashing any roots. <laughs> all right, she's fastened up and ready to go. 